Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock. Welcome to the Holy Monday episode of Holy Week, the study and Bible series that I'm doing here on YouTube from a PDF that's in the doobly-doo. And the verse that I'm going to be using today is one that's very familiar to most of us, if you've been in the church long. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And while this is a very common verse and we think about it as those people in that time who were doing that thing that Jesus didn't like, I'm always asking the Holy Spirit to reveal to me what of me is in this rather than just sitting there and judging these people for what they've done and show me where I have had pigeons I've been selling. Because in the devotion, they talk about pigeons at one point. And I wanted to do something about those pigeon cages. There's just something in that visual that caught me. So I'm drawing a stack of boxes. I'm going to talk a little bit as I draw in pen about what I just did in pencil. Basically, you could draw a stack of boxes that you can write on the front side of, or you can make them hollow like I'm going to be doing because these are empty cages that have been overturned. And I'm starting by just drawing rectangles. Don't worry about trying to fit in the whole perspective thing. That can be very confusing. If you've studied perspective and you can do that, by all means, go for it. But when you've got a stack of boxes, normally they're not all perfectly flat like this. They're not perfectly rectangular because they're twisted at different angles, that sort of thing. But we're going to pretend they're all stacked perfectly straight. So draw them so that you have room to write on the boxes or in the boxes or whatever. And then draw a side to each one. And I'm going to do one on the left and one on the right and one on the left, one on the right. You can do them thicker. You can do them thinner based on how thick the box is, that sort of thing and just make a second side to them. And if this is all you were gonna do, you're gonna write on the front of the boxes, then you could just put a little shading on the side and be done with that. But I'm going to first, before I add my depth to the boxes, I'm gonna draw in some pigeons because there were pigeons that had escaped from these boxes when Jesus turned them over. And I'm basically drawing a little oval with a little circle on top and a little beak. And that's it. I'm not trying to make them look sideways like pigeons or worry about the shape of a pigeon. I'm just drawing a bunch of little birds sitting around just so I remember that that's what part of the story was about. Well, then I had an oops with some footage. Don't worry. You didn't miss much. Just miss the first two boxes. And I'm going to be able to catch you up on these other boxes by showing you. When you're drawing the inside of the box, you want the left side of the box and the right side of the box to basically be the same width like that. And I'm going to give them a little bit of a looking underneath so you can see the top of the box. You could also just do that with the bottom of the box. And then I'm going to put shading on that that's going to be darker than the shading in the back side of the box. And I could have made the back side really dark and you have that as an option as well to make it look like a really deep box. I was kind of thinking through this and changing my mind as I went. So it is what it is, and my solution to this was to also add some color to it when I got a little further down the line. But I'm doing most of this just in pen. I'm not getting solid with the pen, because if you get solid with the pen, you just scribble over it a whole bunch, you're going to end up going through the paper, and you're going to get, get to that point where you see black bleeding through on the other side. So I try to keep my pen work as simple as possible, on the front and not overlap strokes any more than necessary so that I don't have things showing through on the back side. But notice how one side is on the left, one side is on the right. Same thing as when I put the outside of the boxes together and this is just the reflection, the opposite half of each one of those. And this is where I realized that, you know, it looked kind of okay, they looked a little bit dimensional, but I wanted to have white words written on the insides of the boxes, which meant the boxes needed to be darker. And I couldn't, as I just said, scribble in and color in more with the micron pen. So I decided to add a little color instead. And I used a dot card with some watercolor. You could also do this with pencils or something. 
and added color to them. And I started with brown over the whole thing. And then I took the black color, which is on the dot card called neutral tint, and added just a wash of that to the inside of each box. And that was gonna make it dark enough that my white pen would show up. Cause that was what I was getting worried about, was making sure that I could read what I wrote. Cause that's kind of important in primal journaling is knowing what the heck God was saying to me. And you might notice, of course, my sleeves in this. I am wearing my Christmas pajamas. It is coronavirus season and I am living in pajamas. And, you know, you run out of pajamas, you have to get out the Christmas ones sometimes. So there you go. Once it was dry, I ironed it to flatten it out a bit. Just a couple seconds with a hot iron is plenty. And then wrote my words in it. And the words I ended up trying to write on that back panel so that it looked like you couldn't see them until the birds were freed, the lids were off the boxes. And I wrote, free us for true worship. Because in this passage, Jesus was not as, I mean, he was upset that they were selling things, but what he was really upset about is that they were doing this and holding back those who were the poor and the indigent and the cripples and all the people they didn't want to come into their perfect worship service. They wanted to be there and have everything beautiful and putting this barrier between those people and God was keeping them out of worship. That's not what Jesus said he wanted. He said, this is a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. And, and you know, in order to do that, we need to open ourselves up as a church to welcome in more people. Now, right now, since we can't meet in churches, we're we're kind of at the point where we're open to everything. Anybody can come to online services and that sort of thing. Will we do that again when we're back together? Will we welcome everyone? Or do we require that people dress a certain way or act a certain way in order to be part of our church? I really want God to free us to be in true worship and not worry about the trappings of worship, but really be in worship of him and invite everyone to come and worship with us because that's what he wants. That is true worship. So have a lovely, lovely day. I will see you again tomorrow with another thought on the next devotion for this week. The PDF is in the doobly-doo. You're welcome to download that, pray through it, upload your Bible journaling to our group, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.